After the repairs have been completed and the system has been charged and tested for leaks, it's time to verify the system's integrity by performing the after repairs temperature test. In order to set the vehicle up for the test, you should place the vehicle outside exposed to direct sunlight, open all the doors and windows, allow the engine to reach normal operating temperature, set the AC system to max AC full cold with the blower speed set to high. This test places the AC system under a maximum heat load, stressing the AC and cooling system components. By performing this 5-minute test, you'll be able to identify component efficiency and test for correct refrigerant charge before returning the car to the owner. During the temperature test, we'll be verifying the efficiency of the condenser, evaporator, expansion valve, radiator fan, and the engine's cooling system. First, we'll measure the condenser's sub-cooling efficiency by measuring the temperature drop between the condenser inlet and outlet lines. The temperature differential should be a minimum of 20 degrees Fahrenheit and a maximum of 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we'll measure how much heat is being removed from the ambient air by measuring the air temperature in front of the condenser and the air leaving the center AC duct. The air from the center duct should be a minimum of 30 degrees cooler than the air flowing across the front of the condenser. The evaporator superheat test is next. We'll be testing a Dodge Durango with a 4.7 liter engine. The AC system has dual evaporators using a block type thermal expansion valve at each evaporator. During our test today, we'll be using a four channel temperature tool. It utilizes four probes that allow you to measure the difference between two components at the same time. This temp testing tool also provides you with the temperature difference readings between the probes. First, we'll attach two of the probes to the inlet and outlet lines of the condenser. The probes should be attached as close to the condenser as possible to achieve the most accurate readings. If the design of the vehicle restricts your access to the condenser, simply attach the probes at the closest possible point to the condenser. In order to achieve an accurate diagnosis, make sure the AC lines are clean and free of paint where the probe connectors are located. Paint or dirt on the AC lines can distort your readings by as much as 30 degrees Fahrenheit. After installing the probes, ensure that the clamps and wires are clear of the drive belts and engine pulleys. Next, we'll install the air probes. First, place one of the air probes about a foot in front of the condenser or across the grill. Place the second probe in the center AC duct. With the AC system running and stabilized, we can now record the temperature readings. Temperature test readings. The temperature drop across the condenser is an indicator of the subcooling efficiency of the condenser or how well the condenser can release the heat that was absorbed by the refrigerant. This reading should be between 20 degrees minimum and 50 degrees maximum. The temperature of the discharge line at the top of the condenser is 179 degrees and the reading at the outlet or liquid line at the bottom of the condenser is 138 degrees, or a difference of 41 degrees. This reading indicates that the condenser is performing to specifications. Let's take a look at the air temperatures. The ambient air in front of the condenser is 104 degrees and the temperature of the air coming out of the center AC duct is 65 degrees for a difference of 39 degrees, indicating that the system is performing great. When the owner is driving down the road during cruise conditions, the air coming from the center AC duct will be in the 40 degree range, providing a very comfortable passenger compartment. Testing the evaporator heat exchange process. Thermal expansion valve systems. Most TXV systems locate the expansion valve inside the evaporator case, making it nearly impossible to get a temperature reading at a contact point past the valve. The temperature probe must be connected at a point where the refrigerant pressure and temperature has dropped to determine the superheat efficiency of the evaporator. When testing expansion valve systems that do not provide access to the evaporator inlet line after the TXV, we can test the operation of the valve by measuring the center duct outlet air temperature and the suction line temperature. With the probes attached, we can monitor the temperature difference between the center duct air temperature and outlet line. The duct air temperature is reading 65 degrees and the outlet line close to the firewall is reading 67 degrees for a difference of 2 degrees. This reading falls within our parameters of 0 degrees Fahrenheit to plus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, indicating that the expansion valve is controlling the flow of refrigerant through the evaporator and transferring heat efficiently. This test parameter is valid for most passenger vehicles because they use thermal expansion valves with superheat settings that range between 4 degrees Fahrenheit and 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, if the temperature at the evaporator outlet line is cooler than the center duct air, it could indicate an expansion valve that is stuck open or is overcharged, allowing liquid refrigerant to return to the compressor. If the reading is warmer, exceeding our plus 10 degrees Fahrenheit specification, the system may be undercharged or the expansion valve may be restricted. After repair summary, please keep in mind all of the temperature readings are related to each other. 
you cannot take one of the readings, like the AC duct temperature, and make a diagnostic conclusion one way or the other. As an example, a slightly undercharged system will actually deliver the coldest duct temperature reading, but the compressor will be starving for oil due to the undercharge and fail within a couple of weeks. All three readings should be examined together. On a well-balanced system, the condenser subcooling reading should be within a couple of degrees of the ambient to duct air reading. Of course, if you're experiencing high humidity during the test, the heat transfer from the air will be reduced by as much as 20%. But the readings should never vary by more than 10 to 15 degrees, even under those conditions. As you saw, during our after repairs temperature test today, the drop between the air readings and the condenser readings only varied by 2 degrees, indicating that the system was able to release nearly all of the heat that was absorbed by the refrigerant and the evaporator. If any of the readings are not within specification, you need to determine what the possible causes might be and make the necessary repairs before you return the car to the owner. Isolate the faulty component or make corrections to the refrigerant charge to correct the problem. As you can see, the after repairs temperature test only takes a few minutes to complete and it will prevent the possibility of a comeback and an unhappy customer. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. We hope you'll incorporate these tests on every AC system that you repair. Thanks again for your support.